Hi guys, 18 Dap here and welcome to this video. Before we make a start on it, I just want to make a quick announcement. I've been lucky enough to be selected to play for the third time in the Eve Merton Dreams Trust Charity Legends football game at the Eco Power Stadium. The event sponsored by the Eco Power Group on the 7th of May 2022 at the Eco Power Stadium. Tickets are available. Contact me on my socials if you want any. Donations will be greatly appreciated. Link to the donation pages in the description down below. And also a big thank you to CK Decorators for a personal sponsor for me. Great decorators. If you need any decorating work done, please get in touch with them. Links to their socials are in the description down below. It's going to be a good game. Get yourself down there. But for now, let's get on with this video. Hi guys, welcome to this match preview for Good Friday's game in League One. It's Doncaster Rovers versus Bolton Wanderers. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you for sticking around. If this video has brought you to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And if you are new to the channel, this is a format that we go through match previews. We'll look at previous meetings between the two clubs, current form across all competitions. I choose a Doncaster Rovers player to profile a few words about that individual. And then I choose the opponents one to watch, so I pick a Bolton Wanderers player who I think Rovers fans should be watching out for on Friday. And then we round the video off with three predictions. A predicted team lineup, thanks to FanHub. Me and the family have got predictions on the table, so there's an update on that. And then finally, to finish the video off, the all important score prediction. So without further ado, let's get into previous meetings. Bolton and Donny only faced off a total of 13 times in our history. Rovers coming out on top on four occasions. Bolton winning this battle at the minute with eight wins out of the 13 and we've shared the spoils on the solitary one occasion. Drilling down to the last five meetings, as you can see Bolton got the edge once again. Four wins out of the last five games, Rovers winning one. We have to go back to 2007 in the FA Cup for the fifth game uh, and that was at the Keepmo Stadium when we got battered 4-0. We do not want that on Good Friday. But then in the 13-14 season championship it was a double for Bolton, 3-0 win um, at their place and a 2-1 win at our place. And then we jumped forward um, six years to 2020 in League One. Uh, we only managed the one game against them that season and that was a 2-1 win um, in a season where Bolton were, were struggling off field. That season, Bolton got relegated and then came back up uh, at the first time of asking from League Two. And earlier this season, fell to a 3-0 defeat away from home. So, Bolton definitely got the edge over Doncaster in this fixture. Hopefully, we can turn that around on Good Friday and keep the glimmer of hope alive uh, for our survival hopes. Current form, and it is also leaning towards Bolton in this one. Rovers coming into this off the back of a defeat, a draw, two defeats, and then a much-needed win on Saturday. Bolton, on the other hand, a defeat, a win, and then a hat-trick of draws. As I mentioned, a good a good result on Saturday, a much better performance overall from Donny. It was expected, though, crew, um, a very poor side, unfortunately. I think they may struggle next year in League 2 if they don't, if they don't sort themselves out. Um, similar to us, really, uh, a poor, poor season in League 1 and just a season that I think both sets of fans just want to forget sooner rather than later. But a little bit of belief in our abilities saw us come out victorious and it was a better performance than what we've seen in recent weeks from the Rovers. And that has left a glimmer of hope coming into the final four games for, for Rovers fans um, with the sides from 19th to 23rd separated by only five points with 12 to play for. The running is massive and I can see it's still going down to the final day. But to get it down to the final day, we need performances against a good Bolton team. Um, Shrewsbury away from home on Easter Monday and then Burton next Saturday. Three teams that potentially could be on the beach. Nothing to play for. That could play in our favour. Um, but if it is down to the last day, Oxford away who could be push, pushing for the playoffs. Um, yeah, It's going to be nervy for us Rovers fans. That's if we get it down to the last day. We've got to, got to perform in our next couple of games and hope the results go our way. Bolton coming into the fixture on the back of a hat-trick of 1-1 draws against solid opposition as well. Got to take that into account. Drawing 1-1 at Wigan and then 2-1-1s 
at home to Portsmouth and Sheffield Wednesday. Three very good teams there that they managed to get points off of. But that leaves Bolton sitting in 10th, uh, 12 points outside of the playoffs with 12 to play for. And for me, playoffs, well, I think it's unattainable now. You've got uh, Chef Wednesday and Sunderland. I think they played a game less and they're the ones just inside the playoffs. So playoffs is off for Bolton. Hopefully that means that they're on the beach, they're playing in the flip-flops and we've got a good chance of coming away with something. Um, hopefully the three points on Good Friday. But it's a great first season back for Bolton in League One after promotion. And for me, the potentially a team to keep an eye on next season in League One. I think they'll push on and be challenging for top six once again next season. Moving on to player profile for this video, I have chosen Adam Clayton. And I've chosen Adam because I was a little underwhelmed um, by Adam in his first few appearances in a Rovers shirt. He looked, he looked sluggish, he looked unfit. Um, but he has changed my opinion over the last couple of games. I think he's now looking much sharper. I think he gives us that tenacity in the midfield that we've been missing all season. That experience as well is just so valuable um, with the youngsters in and around him. But yeah, that tenacity, he, he loves a challenge and I think that gets people on the edge of the seats or off the seats as much as a goal sometimes. Having that, having that bite in midfield, um, it gets the fans going. So I think we have been missing that all season. So it's nice to see him getting up to match fitness. I think it could be a very important part of this team coming into the last four games of the season. Especially if John Bostock stays fit as well. I thought the partnership between them two against Crew showed what our midfield was missing all season. I think if we had two players like that, for the majority of the season, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in now. I think they just controlled that midfield and that's where the game was won for me. So hopefully, Clayton and Bostock can stay fit and keep that partnership going through these last four games of the season. So, it's changed my opinion. Um, looking forward to seeing more of him, hopefully, next season. Moving on to the one to watch for Bolton. So, as I've always said, you know your club much better than what I do. So, if you think I'm missing the mark with this, please let me know in the comments down below. But I have gone with Oladapo Afalayan. Um, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But very, very good player. Um, played well when I went to watch the game at Bolton. 24-year-old uh, left winger, 47 appearances this season for Bolton, 13 goals. He's Bolton's top scorer in all competitions and he's popped up with a number of assists as well with five. He was on the bench against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, didn't make an appearance, but... I think potentially rested for this one. Who knows? But yeah, a very good player. And I think our right-hand side could be in for a, a bit of a torrid time if he's playing. Very, very good player. For me, the one to watch for Bolton. Moving on to the predicted team lineup. This is thanks to FanHub. If you've not downloaded the app yet, please go ahead and do so. Plenty of features to get your teeth stuck into. I use it mainly to predict the team lineup. Um, but if you are in the queue waiting to get in, I've got one use remaining on the golden ticket, 18D-EMC. Pop that in, you'll skip the queue, you'll be straight into the app. And once you're there, you can predict your team lineup amongst many other features. And for me, for this fixture, I've gone with the following team lineup. Unchanged from the game against Crew, Mitchell in goal, a back four of Noyle, Williams, Alowu and Rowe. A midfield five of Bostock and Clayton, a little bit deeper with... Barlow, Smith and Josh Martin a little bit further forward, supporting Rio Griffiths up front on his own. Hopefully, we found a winning formula. Um, there's no injury concerns and that could, could potentially be the team to face Bolton on Good Friday. Moving on to the predictions league table. So, me and the family predict the scoreline for every single league game this season. If we get the scoreline spot on, we get three points. If we get the outcome of the game right, but not the result, we get one point. If we get it completely wrong, we get no points. And me and Max went with 1 1s on Saturday against Crew. My dad thought the crew were going to beat us. Um, the only positive person within the family was Chris. He went with a 2 0, which means he got the scoreline spot on. No change in the table, but Chris has pulled that gap. A little bit tighter at the bottom. He's now on 17 points. Max in third on 21. Me and my dad joint top on 25 points. So four games to go. Hopefully changing the table coming over the next couple of games. And that leads me on to my score prediction. As I said earlier in the video. Very tight down at the bottom. Five points. 12 to play for. I hope the win against Crew has galvanised the squad. And give us a bit of belief that we can still get out of this. 
Um, we need results to go our way above us. I think teams are playing each other over the next couple of games, so they're not all going to win. It's down to us. We need to do our bit, and if the dice doesn't fall our way, then so be it. Um, but if we do our bit, that's all we can ask for. So I'm hoping for another positive performance and another positive result. I'm going to stick my neck on the line. I'm hoping Bolton are on the beach, playing in the flip-flops. I'm hoping that goes in our favour. I'm going with a tight 2-1 Rovers win. And then survival is still on. We will see. And that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you've enjoyed it, please stick a big thumbs up on it for us. Please, comments in the section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.